Greetings, uh, good afternoon to everyone. Uh, yeah, from the sunny Latvia. Uh, this is Grandmaster Artum Actions. I'm back with my bootcamp. Just to answer the very first question by Brawlmeister in the chat. Yeah, first, welcome, of course, to my channel. <laughs> What's on the menu? Yeah, so I plan today to talk about Exchange Karakan system. Uh, why is this? I mean, why the Karakan system? Let me make these first moves in the beginning. e4, c6, d4, d5, e takes, c takes, bishop d3 with the idea to play c3. So this is the so-called exchange uh, variation of the Karakan. And uh, I would like to share with you with some of the ideas how I... Um, treat this uh, variation. Uh, hi, Bunkinator, and everybody else. Yeah, I just started, so obviously more people are gonna join us in the next uh, minutes. Uh, yeah, so uh, the main reason basically why I'm doing this uh, is that I'm actually right now, I'm writing a database for modern chess, and I'm in the finishing stages. Uh, because I had to research uh, the, the mainstream, so to speak, the mainstream theory in the main line, so it was not really so easy to prove that White can actually find some interesting, fresh ideas and fight for advantage, but I believe that I'm quite close. Uh, of course, I'm not going to present everything I'm writing in the channel, so this uh, bootcamp's topic most likely is going to be like an overview of the possibilities which are available in this uh, so-called exchange variation or uh, uh, or the cosmic structure uh, the sub battle yeah that's a very valid question I mean I'm still I still haven't done this yeah but I should I'm organizing this uh, very first activity for the subs uh, which is um, titled uh, simul uh, simultaneous exhibition I would like to play I'm not ashamed. No, I'm not ashamed to teach the Kara. It's not boring. I think it's actually quite fun. It is quite fun from the White's perspective. And the rising positions you are going to see, they are quite interesting. Yeah, but anyway, what I what I said is that um, uh, I, I plan to organize a simultaneous uh, exhibition on 20 boards for my subs. This is the first time I'm doing this. So definitely answering the question what hysterics uh, are. Uh, asked is that I'll definitely do some sub battles. Definitely, yeah. I just have to get around this, and I realized that perhaps some people are less interested to play in, uh, with a GM than to play against somebody, um, uh, somebody about their level, and a GM is commentating this stuff. Yeah. So, so this is why what I'm uh, now starting to understand. Um, I think I sort of uh, learned it. Yeah, I mean, I've been changing uh, various lines from time to time. And um, I stream at the moment four times per week. I was in a vacation uh, pretty much the whole July. So I had to decrease my streaming activity. Uh, okay, excellent, super genial. Yeah, that's great. So I hope you're going to learn something new from this. So I'd like to give some kind of um, overview that what is actual here and uh, where's the modern theory actually developing. So if you go back a few moves, I mean, of course, uh, there are many highly contested lines. I believe this is the so-called already old theory, knight c3, right? D takes, knight e4, bishop f5, knight g3. Yeah, there's obviously so many continuations here, and um, I believe that Black is doing fine here. I mean, even even the even the immediate knight of six, I believe Black is doing just fine after takes and e takes, right? Although I mean, White can try to get some small edge. Uh, then there's the two knights variation, knight c3, d5, knight f3. There's also knight f6. There's bishop g4. I'll tell you honestly, I've played everything. Absolutely. It's not like I've chosen a random continuation. I decided, okay, this is what I'm gonna uh, play myself and suggest to everyone. Because since I'm a professional chess player, I have to try everything until I come to a line which 
suits not only to my playing style but which I can also recommend for my students. And uh, there's also the most popular advanced variation which is e5. And there's many moves of course after bishop f5. Uh, the most popular continuation here is knight f3, bishop e2, short castle. There's more aggressive g4, then there's h4, there's uh, uh, this uh, early knight e2, knight b3. I mean, we are not going to talk about this, right? I mean, there's so many ways to tackle the Karakan. Uh, but, but the bottom line is the Karo is still a super solid opening. And while... While I, I realize this, I'm going to suggest to you to play a rather simple setup, which you can try to play against uh, those super solid Karo players out there. And not necessarily always you'll get an advantage, right? Uh, but I've actually changed my attitude towards uh, uh, the goals which I set myself in my openings is I believe the modern theory has developed almost already to such a stage that pretty much there is almost there is no advantage in every single line i mean if black knows his stuff perfectly most likely he'll make the draw in every single line so what i'm talking about is getting interesting fun to play lines which suit your playing style right so e takes d takes and bishop d3 uh there's essentially um, three three subtopics I would like to talk with you. So the main stuff is going to be the so-called Carlsbad structure. So for example, let's say Black is continuing to play uh, Knight c6, c3, and we are going to have a look at the two main continuations here. Knight f6, we are playing Bishop f4, and I'm going to show you the following setup after this. If black stops this from happening and he plays queen c7 to stop bishop f4 from happening, I'm going to suggest knight e2 short cast and still insist on bishop f4. Uh, then there is also the so-called <laughs> old theory. Yeah, it's actually quite funny. The theory keeps changing all the time. So what was old today? It might be already revisited and quite modern line tomorrow. So for example... Uh, there's this line e takes, c takes, uh, bishop d3, knight c6, c3, and knight f6. Uh, as far as I'm concerned, among the professionals, I've noticed this line mostly is played at a rapid and blitz events because their rising structures, they're very easy to set up. They don't require really, really a lot of nuances to remember. So white would typically here play bishop f4, which I'm actually advocating in my database. Bishop f4, bishop g4, queen b3, and white wants to play knight a2, knight f3, short castle, and probably after some time to play knight e5. Uh, what was interesting about this line? There was the so-called old move, which is h3. Uh, typically for the Carlsbad structure. So what is a Carlsbad structure? So the pawns are aligned like this. White has a very powerful light square bishop. And typically he wants to position the other bishop on a four. Uh, let's just make some random moves. For example, I mean, instead of the h3, whatever. I'll just put some random moves here, here, here. Castle, castle, knight e2, b6, knight e5. So this is most likely already a dream position in the so-called Carlsbad structure and the exchange Karakan uh, variation because white organizes quite a free attack at the king side. I mean, for example, let's say black does something like this, bishop b7, white plays rook e1, he plays queen f3, queen h3, um, maybe even some funny ideas as g4, g5. Uh, sometimes also the rook can join the action here through the third rank knight f3 knight g5 i mean you may you name it so essentially when you look at this position you realize that white has all of his pieces directed towards a kingside attack so it's a queen and a knight both knights actually both bishops a rook and maybe even a couple of pawns so i think that's actually quite a great position to reach after the opening i mean obviously obviously black He'll, if uh, black is really aware of this line he'll do everything in his power to stop this but this would be our dream position 
So why why this um, introduction? Why it's so important? Because I mean, we have to understand our dream position, where we are heading. I mean, I suggest to play c3 here. What is my goal? Like I said before, I want to play bishop f4. I want to position the knight here. I want to make a short castle, knight e2, and then proceed with this uh, uh, potential kingside attack. Uh, so if black plays knight f6, his typical idea here is he wants to solve the problem of this bishop on c8. Hi, Chekhov. Yeah, happy you're here. Yeah, I just started. Uh, so the typical plan for black is he wants to play bishop g4. Yeah, but not to trade it for the knight on f3. The typical plan involves bishop g4, bishop h5, and bishop g6. Although this costs quite a few tempos for black, for white, the practice shows it's not easy to prove. I mean, if white even has any advantage. Uh, if you would ask the engines, engines typically are quite fond of this uh, variation, typically stockfish. I mean, stockfish is such a super optimist uh, of uh, various open lines, and he would typically evaluate this line something like 0 0.5, 0 0.6 in terms of the computer evaluation advantage for white, but in reality it's probably closer to equal than much better for white. Yeah, so what, why, what I was starting to say here, so the old move is here the so-called H3. Why I think this is rather important? Because you might actually consider this to play as white and it would save you quite a lot of uh, studies. I mean, this h3 is going to be also applicable if black would play queen c7. So let's say, I mean, if black would play e5. So seemingly that's the most normal move. And after e5, takes, takes. I think we are already happy just play the very simple move knight of 3. Knight of 3 takes and takes. And uh, typically black is already suffering with this uh, isolated pawn on d5, and for white it's just an easy game. I mean, we are going to make a castle, bishop e3, bishop d4, and uh, ideally our dream position, which we would be aiming for, is we would love to trade these dark square bishops, we would love to trade a pair of knights, and keep this pawn isolated on d5, and essentially go to the end game where we have a knight on d4 against the so-called bad light square bishop for black. Of course, it's easier said than done. I mean, I'm not going to talk about the nuances here. There is obviously quite some big theory. There's not only knight f3, there's also uh, bishop b5 uh, check. There's also queen e2 and then bishop b5 check. But the bottom line is black is supposedly equal but he's suffering with this isolated pawn on d5. So that's the reason why this continuation isn't really that popular among the professionals. And uh, yeah, the professionals definitely, they understand this menace, uh, these arising problems, which can start after uh, getting an isolated pawn without any real uh, compensation or activity for your pieces. So this is why people have discovered there is such a move as g6. So g6 is the idea to play bishop f5, trade the bishops, and then potentially position the rook here, e6, bishop d6, queen c7, a long castle. Let me show a sample line. So for example, I mean, I have no clue what is going on here. For example, I play knight f3. I'm playing against this bad bishop because look at this. He, it has no more this bishop g4 maneuver. And neither he can be rerouted to g6, so he plays bishop f5, and this is the old line. Bishop f5, g takes, and let's say I don't know what's going on here, and I make a cast. I mean, seemingly normal looking move. If black would play bishop g7 and short castle, I would probably think about this line, but the problem is, since the bishop, the black's bishop is still on a fate, black can play e6, Let's say something like bishop f4, bishop d6, let's say trade, trade. Black is going to make a castle, long castle, continued by rook g8, knight e4. And I just, I just don't understand why this position actually would be a good position for white. Although I mean computer, 
things. It is probably playable, it's definitely not worse for white, but I would already pick black. And probably many chess professionals will agree with me. Uh, this is why after bishop f5, there is... Uh, you know, I'll tell you honestly, I did not check how new is this continuation. I'll just say that it is the currently uh, the most explored continuation in the Rapid and Blitz games of pretty much the whole world elite, starting from Fabiano Carana. Um... <laughs> yeah, Slayer. Yeah, maybe you'll you'll learn something what to avoid for black. Yeah, that, that's great. So here, for example, I believe it was back in 2017. There might have been even some earlier games when Fabiano was playing against. Uh, I think it was um, David Navarra. Some rapid game, some blitz game. I mean, I don't remember already. He played Bishop E2. So that's the modern stuff. And this Bishop E2 has been already played in a number of games among quite high-level GMs. And seemingly that's strange, right? I mean, what is this? We are letting the bishop on a 5 uh, standing on a good square. But the point is, we are still playing against the so-called bad bishop. I mean, let, let's continue a couple of moves and I hope you'll understand what I'm talking about. So here, for example, black plays bishop g7. Although, I mean, queen c7 maybe is more aggressive. Okay, let's start with bishop g7, because we can include now bishop f4 since black did not start uh, queen c7, but okay, for the sake of simplicity, we are going to uh, start short castle, short castle, and I think it was, yeah, okay, here it's bishop f4, yeah, bishop f4, rook e1, knight e2, and uh, typically for black, it's not really so easy to organize um, a game plan. A white might at the right time execute the move g2, g4, and this bishop is gonna feel sort of awkward on a five. If black at any given time is gonna try to solve the problem of this so-called bad bishop, he could take it on b1, but this would give white quite a lot of chances to organize an inspired attack at the king set. For example, bishop d3, Queen e2, g3, h4, king g2, rook h1, knight e5, and h5. I mean, these are the typical ideas for white in this position. So if black doesn't do this, I mean, he has to do something, right? So this is why there have been attempts, for example, to play knight h5, bishop h2, but then again it runs into g4. And uh, so black is always sort of not understanding what to do with this bishop because for example bishop e4 i can just play knight e2 i'm threatening to take on e4 followed by knight g5 so what are you going to do about this bishop if you would ask the computer the computer says oh, what is this it's equal like zero 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 but imagine yourself in black shoes especially when you're playing an accelerated time control game for example a blitz game or rapid game well it really matters uh, to find a quick solution, a clear game plan, which is easy to execute, you might find it's not so easy to play this from black. So this is why this line has sort of become quite popular recently at a high level GM Blitz and Rapid games. Right, and this um, uh, setup is available from various sort of the moves. For example, bishop f5 immediately, we are not going to take it because of this still the same g takes e6, bishop d6, queen c7, and long castle. I find this to be the most annoying setup in Black's arsenal. So I think I already gave you an idea who was it, Slayer6776. <laughs> if you are looking for this in terms as a, a player from the black side, I think this is already a great position for you if white would take on f5. So this is why after bishop f5, bishop e2, let's say black is stopping bishop f4 from happening. So he plays queen c7. Now we simply make a castle here. Um, let me try to remember. Knight bd2, short castle. What's funny here, rook e1 here is impossible. Yeah, I mean, we, we would love to play uh, something like knight f1, knight, <clears throat> knight g3, 
followed by some bishop g5, knight e5, organize something at the king's side. But here, black has an amazing resource, knight b4. So you just need to be careful about this. And knight b4, c takes, bishop c2, suddenly white loses some material in, in the means of a queen. And knight c2 is a very annoying threat. And knight e3 is a positional threat. I mean, so this is why, I apologize, wait a second, what happened here? Uh, yeah, okay. No, I'm sorry. I just sort of scrolled it away. Let me go back for a moment. Here, here. Queen c7, castle, bishop g7, knight e2, short castle. For example, there was a blitz game between Anish Giri and who was this? Um, let me check. Ivan Chiparinov. They played the Blitz game in World Championship of Blitz in St. Petersburg in 2018. And Anish solved this problem, the so-called problem of knight b4. He included a3 so that there is no knight b4. And actually a3 is a useful move against typical a6, b5, a5, b4 ideas. And the white actually is including a3 at some time later. So after a3, let me find you let me find you the exact game yeah i'll just i'll just copy it here yeah knight of three g6 bishop f5 okay here anish started with queen c7 i don't think it really matters because essentially you're getting the same position and again bishop e2 knight e2 a3 rook e1 and it might be easy to judge black because here black played knight e4 bishop e3 a6 a4 and the question is again um uh you're not late vishnu hi vishnu we just started something like uh, 20 minutes ago yeah and uh, for why this is um a slayer quite a quite a easy all right yeah thank you vishnu for the host uh, quite an easy plan to execute and here for example in this blitz game between Anish Giri and Ivan Ceparino it's already not really that clear what to do because here white would want to play something like queen c1 bishop f4 maybe g4 knight g3 and in this game he played e5 because e5 is the most natural thing to do because it sort of frees uh, black's pieces but again if you look at this position again Black is left with an isolated pawn on d5. And again, our ideal position, which we would like to get, is we would like somehow to trade the bishops, the dark square bishops. We would like somehow to get rid of this knight and reroute the knight from f1 to d4 and play against the so-called bad light square bishop for black. And then there's just torture our opponent until his position falls apart i mean of course it's easier said than done but that is that is the typical idea uh vishnu i'm i'm gonna talk about also about the g6 systems yeah yeah so not only about that because there's so many interesting lines which i would like to show to you which is quite popular right now so that uh I'm trying to sort of advocate for this line because this is the line we're writing a database right now. Yeah, so I'd like to find a couple of weeks to finish it because I've been writing it for the pretty much the whole 2020. I just have so little time to finish this. Yeah, but I mean the core idea is already finished. Okay, so so this is actually interesting because, for example, if I would play here Queen C7, which is the second move. Right, I mean, instead of the knight f6, which allows bishop f4, you can still play h3. And again, if he would rush with a typical knight f3, which is the most obvious move, right? Black just plays bishop g4, and doesn't matter what you're doing, pretty much the next move is going to be bishop h5, bishop g6, e6, knight f6, and black has exchanged his troublesome light square bishop and like i said before in the exchange karakan this light square bishop is the so-called problem child of black's position in every single line yeah so 
For example, after queen c7, I think it's still a great idea to think about h3 to stop this idea from happening. Again, e5 gives you quite a lot of freedom. Takes, takes. I believe you can already give just a check. Or maybe bishop e2 or b bishop c2. Or maybe just knight f3 right away. Takes, takes. And black again is left with this isolated pawn. An easy game for white. So, for example, black doesn't do this. And he's doing something else. For example, he plays still the same idea. Knight f6, knight f3, g6, castle, and bishop f5. Which is, again, transforming to a game between Anish Giri, the blitz game between Anish Giri and Ivan Ceparinov. Okay, okay, yeah. We'll wait for you, Slayer. Um, hope you join us later. Uh, and again, we can still play Bishop E2. Yeah, Bishop E2, Rook E1. Don't miss the Knight B4 idea. Include A3, Knight B2, Knight F1, typical sum, Bishop G5, Queen C1, Bishop F4, and it's just easy. I mean, I'll tell you honestly in the beginning. I mean, there is no advantage for white. Definitely. This is just an easy to play line. If you're concerned about playing quite deep theory against people who are playing the caro, I mean, this is the perfect solution. Especially when you're playing an accelerated uh, uh, tournament. But I'll tell you honestly, since ever I've started to play the exchange caro, I've played also it in a classical game against GM and I won the game so it's definitely playable also at the GM level maybe okay maybe it's not playable uh, against the top level yeah because these guys they know everything and for example if I'm just guessing for example if Magnus would try to play this against Wesley so and they played already uh, the exchange character quite a number of times in Axe at the time controls pretty sure Magnus wouldn't beat Wesley in in a classical game in this line yeah because i mean they they just know it so well but the rest of the people like mortals like me <laughs> I, I still think this is quite a fun and playable line okay let's go forward so h3 might actually solve quite a lot of your problems uh yeah hi richter's neighbor uh, thank you uh, if you if you're missing this and you would like to check it, of course you can afterwards after the stream you can still check uh, my video archive, which is going to be available at my Twitch channel under the videos tab. And if you are still missing it, after some time I'm going to export uh, this video to my YouTube channel. And speaking about my YouTube channel, which I'm going to I think the system supposedly should bring up this link. Yeah, so this is my YouTube channel where essentially I'm uploading all of my streams and among them my bootcamp videos. Uh, I've already created several playlists which uh, make your task easier to find the desired topic. And yeah, it's just easier to browse what is there because there are already quite, quite a number of uh, videos, all of them are uh, at least several hours, hours long so I think the playlists were quite quite important to add right let's go back and there's another quite interesting position because essentially what you need to do here when you're learning this exchange car you just need to study how to play out the Carlsbad structure to a perfection and if you learn that the rising positions they're going to be more or less the same okay let's let's go with the main stuff and let's try to do this so bishop d3 knight c6 and c3 again our ideal goal is to play bishop f4 let's let's try to do again something passive i, I think i already explained before knight of six here 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 okay let's try to exchange the bishops we don't really object. Let's watch out from e5 to free this bishop. So I think queen e2 is quite important. Black would love to stop us. He insists to play e5. We are stopping him. And let's say some random moves are being played. Short castle. I don't know, maybe it's already quite difficult to suggest anything good for black. Maybe something like knight e7. 
g4 rook e1 rook f3 rook h3 g5 i mean this is a pretty much a one-sided game already although technically black didn't do anything wrong yeah oh thank you thank you yeah for the what was that <laughs> yeah um what does uh, black have to do to defend yeah yeah i think those were bets right i just i'm sort of confused there were 100 dogs there never seen them before <laughs> okay thank you thank you appreciate it really um uh so what does black have to do he has to be active like he has to know the actual stuff the actual theory here this is already a passive a passive defense from black but like i explained before i think in every single <laughs> yeah thank you Mina, Reno. yeah in every single line you have to know the perfect position where you're aiming which is your goal okay let's try to do some mainstream theory here for example instead of the okay let's start with knight of six yeah, so knight of six is seemingly the most popular continuation and you now have a choice you can try this h3 this so-called old move with a new touch bishop e2 but like i said you i mean pretty much there is no advantage i mean you can try this this is easy to play it out but typically black is not suffering uh there's the main move bishop f4 and again at the highest level uh this continuation is pretty much played at rapid and accelerated time controls so the idea is we are not letting black to play queen c7 and let's say let's say okay here the main move obviously is bishop g4 but let's say black is still insisting to play g6 I mean he still wants to play bishop f5 after the trade he might still think about e6 bishop d6 and so on and so forth yeah so it's completely normal the point is we are not wasting time for h3 we are playing knight f3 we don't mind bishop g4 because takes 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 again this will be an easy game for white at the king side so knight e2 queen e2 knight f3 shot castle g3 h4 king g2 knight e5 you name it quite easy stuff okay i mean there might be some nuances that black actually is provoking white to play h3 then he plays bishop f5 but i mean if you really want to get into nuances you don't have to play h3 right away yeah so so let's say black is playing bishop f5 right away since that was his original idea of course you can still retreat bishop e2 and try to make this bishop on f5 look bad but it's gonna require most likely for you to play h3 anyway so that you can try to bother this bishop with g4 but for the sake of simplicity here i suggest to take take short castle and uh, i've actually played this line already numerous times in online blitz uh uh, tournaments especially now in the, this uh, COVID crisis and the typical mistake here uh, black usually does he does something like this he plays um let's say bishop g7 92 let's say uh, castle rook e1 e6 uh, this position might arise from several lord of the moves and similarly black is okay because he wants to play knight e4 and the typical idea is to do something afterwards involve a6 b5 a5 b4 try to create some kind of a pressure against the c3 pawn and focus on playing uh at the queen side but the problem here is it's quite funny actually because of the pawn on h2 and not on h3 white has access to knight e5 rook e3 rook h3 and very simple attack queen h5 <clears throat> uh i'll tell you honestly high carlonian i don't remember the game morozovic and tomashevsky i don't remember i have probably seen it i've seen all of the games pretty much in this line but now here that you are asking me i uh, don't remember a particular uh game blitz triber yeah but again yeah so after capturing e5 that's a very valid question 
So typically the idea is we want to take the pawn and knight e4 and proceed with queen h5. Okay, maybe not queen h5 right away. Maybe I should have should have tried to do something more positional. Let's say knight b3. Still, I'm sort of bothering black with the f3 move. And then I want to play queen h5, rook e3, rook h3. So for black, in order to defend, most likely he's going to have to play f6. Because this queen h5 idea is going to be quite annoying. <laughs> 250 moves, okay. Well, I, I don't remember. I think the last GM who played 200 moves plus, I think it was David Howell against... I think it was some kind of a European Club Cup last year. It was pretty much already a uh, fortress and they kept playing this for 200 moves or something. I mean, <laughs> this I just remember at the highest level, 200 plus uh, move game. Yeah, uh, Howell immediately pops in my mind, but I just, yeah, I don't remember the game you're talking about. I'm sorry. Right. And yeah, I hope this position is already quite clear. So the knight wants to go to d4. I don't know what might be the most precise order of the move. Should it be rook e3, rook h3, or queen h5 first? But let's say black is doing something like f6. So we just take it here, f3, and the black is already losing some material. Okay, there's bishop g5, but I mean, you already can at least position a lot of pieces on the e file, and this pawn is extremely weak. Uh, queen c7. Queen c7, I think I sort of... Okay, queen c7 we still did not uh, discuss. Yeah, definitely queen c7 is a possibility. Because, let's go back. Uh, here are pretty much two main continuations here. It's either queen c7 or knight f6. I won't argue which is the most popular. I think knight f6 is more popular at the top level. And queen c7 probably is more popular with the rest. I think so, please, because that's that's the impression I was getting when uh, analyzing what people are playing. Because, like I said ago, uh, again, I'm writing a database uh, for these lines, so I have to sort of check everything what is being played. But <laughs> yeah, I don't remember the game Tomaszewski against Morozovic. <laughs> that's that's funny actually. All right, so again, let's go back. So knight of six. Um, what was the line? Okay, bishop f4, g6, knight f3, bishop f5, takes, takes, short castle. And there is this idea, if black is oblivious of this idea, then you can try to aim for a very easy game. And again, answering to the question, I believe I already did it, the typical idea is to play d takes on e5 to push the knight away from the f6 square. I mean, it might be possible that you could also take with the bishop. Yeah, but I think d takes on e5 does free white the h5 square. And after knight e4, knight b3. And then try to organize some hostilities at the king side. So if black doesn't do this, he might actually realize, if he is aware of this idea, that it's not possible. He might try to do the same idea with e6, a bishop d6, and play a long castle. Actually, you still have this idea not to rush with short castle yourself. Yeah, of course. I mean, you could still try to play knight b2 the first. Uh, black could play e6. Instead of the rushing with the short castle, you could play queen e2 as well. But I don't think it really matters. Short castle, bishop d6, takes, takes, queen e2. And typically, you just rearrange the knight to, e, uh, knight to e5. Uh, Carloni, were you posting something there? I just don't understand the last comment. So the idea is to play knight e5 and rearrange the knight to d3. But this would be easier to play if the king obviously was on the queen side. So this is why, like I said again, you don't have to rush with short castle. So I just showed you this idea for the sake of simplicity that... If black does this, uh, if he plays it out inaccurate, with, uh, inaccurately, then there's this idea to play rook e3, rook h3. But if you are playing against experienced player, it might actually make more sense to postpone this decision to castle short 
queen e2, bishop d6. I think there was also a... Okay, I think it was bishop d6, queen d6, and knight e5. So you want to rearrange the knight on d3. Let's say black is doing something like queen c7. Otherwise, he cannot really take. Now, now you have a choice. Probably something like knight df3. Rearrange this knight here. Let's do something like rook g8. Okay, maybe like this. Rook g8, g3, long castle. You can also do a long castle. And typical plan is knight d3, knight h4, f3, and g4 at some time. If you ask the computer, the computer says white has some advantage. In reality, again, it's sort of... Yeah, it's always, always sort of close to equality. So you might actually rush immediately with knight d3 if you're concerned about the trade. But answering to your question, um, code, code exedoc, after knight e5, you also have this opportunity at the right time to take with the depot. This gives you access to the d4 square for your knight. For example, something like knight e7, short castle, yeah, okay, I think I misplayed it already, because rook g8, rook g4, rook e4 is a serious threat. What I wanted to achieve, I wanted to play g3, rook d1, rook e1, knight e4, and try to somehow grind uh, this position to some sort of advantage, because black has this pawn. But probably, I'll tell you honestly, it's probably not enough. So probably you want to keep two knights on the board. So knight, of, knight d3, knight f3, g3, short uh, long castle, king b1, and then try to outmaneuver your opponent. But it's not much. It's definitely not much. And the black is sort of slightly worse because of the double pawns, because of this uh, weakness on h7. But this will be somebody with black who is familiar with this position. It's not somebody who is... Um, never played it before for him it might be just not obvious that he has not uh, he doesn't have to position the bishop on g7 but on d6 because typically everybody who plays here g6 they intend to play bishop g7 and it really takes some understanding of course exactly that's my point so everybody typically plays g6 not only to play bishop f5 but to play bishop g7 and short cast. So it really takes some understanding that you have to play, I mean, it is the best continuation for black, to play g6 just to play bishop f5, and after the trade, e6 and bishop d6. But I mean, I still think this is an okay position, because we have not played h3. Because we would have pretty much the same position, which would be the so-called old line. Let me go back a few moves here this would be the so-called old line after knight of three bishop f5 and people used to play this actually and computer fully supports this position he still thinks this is better for white with the move h3 and we are getting the same position without the move on h3 and since the pawn is on h2 we can just play g3 to fix any uh, incoming hostilities at the g file and it also gives us access to play at some time later f2 f3 to drive away the knight from e4 it's not much but it is a difference okay uh so yeah so what i was saying here so after um bishop f4 g6 uh what was else here yeah, so knight f3. I mean, black doesn't have to play bishop f5. Yeah. Uh, again, if you're sort of... You, if you think it's not really much here after bishop f4, g6, knight f3, bishop f5, you can just try to play bishop e2 and switch to this so-called modern stuff with bishop e2 and then play h3, knight b2, short castle, and uh, black is going to be sort of at a loss what to do with his bishop on f5 and it is entirely possible that he will come up with the same idea which already strong gms have done before that he has to push e7 e5 okay uh so here after bishop f4 g6 um knight f3 there is also this possibility 
that black might not play bishop f5 or bishop g4 at all. Let's say he is doing something simple, right? Since he played g6, why not play bishop g7 and short castle and think later? It's entirely possible. Bishop g7, short castle, short castle, knight e2. And again, again. Now you might remember this idea. If black would play here bishop f5, you remember, guys, right? Bishop f5, what was the idea? We just take on an f5, play rook e1, knight e5, rook e3, rook h3, and try to check me black. It might seem it's easy. <laughs> I played this numerous times already online. It's not really that obvious for everyone. Especially, it's so important that this pawn on h pawn, yeah, this pawn h pawn is not on h3, it's on h2. So, for example, if black is trying to be funny with bishop g4, you think he's a really smart player. Maybe you just don't have to play h3 right away. Play rook e1. And give him the opportunity to take here on f3. So maybe actually h3 will be a waste of time. Okay, so here, for example, black does nothing. He doesn't play bishop f5, he doesn't play bishop g4. So what's he supposed to do here? Because for white, let's imagine the next couple of moves. Rook e1, knight e5, maybe h3, queen e2, every single piece except after rook on the a1 is focused at the game, at the king set or the center. Every single piece is looking towards the direction, the direction of the black king. It's not easy. So here is quite a classical idea for black. Try to solve this problem with a drastic action. Knight, h5. Yeah, by the way, nobody has said hydrate me. <laughs> I need to hydrate. If you check the channel points, I've made new channel point system. You can give me a hydrate command five times a stream. Yeah, so I was talking already so much that <laughs> I needed... Uh, don't rush it, don't rush it. I... Yeah, yeah, three hydrates in a row, I appreciate it. Now it's going to expire. <laughs> I have a limit. I have a limit, guys. That's it, that's a limit. <laughs> Jacob took the last. Anyway, so not H5. What are we, we are going to do here? What you have to... <laughs> I think everybody has some kind of a starting points in every single channel. <laughs> yeah. What you have to understand here, just have to understand some principles. You don't want to trade the bishop, the dark square bishop, for the knight. That's already quite important information. So this means you don't want to play bishop g3. Now why is that? Why is that? Because bishop g3, I would imagine some of you probably would just play it right away because that is natural, right? I mean, we exchange supposedly equal pieces and the knight on h5 is feeling funny. Um, do you think I should increase the hydrate rate? I'll think about this. <laughs> yeah, if you, if you have some suggestions. Ah, by the way, by the way, I just remembered. There is also a very little advertisement. I've created a new club, a chess.com. So if you have some interesting ideas you would like to see in this channel uh, about the topics which I'm discussing, any ideas, any feedback, I would really appreciate you would join the chat, I mean, join the, join the club, and leave some remarks or comments there, and I'll look into this. So for example, about the point system as well. Uh, why bishop g3 here is not really such a great decision because black is happy to take take and let's say he does something like queen c7 so the question is how do we proceed here we have no targets it's already quite difficult to stop blacks e7 e5 from happening but the question is, how do we organize everything, anything at all at the king side? I don't think there's any way. So essentially what you need to understand that the bishops are one of the most important pieces in the so-called exchange uh, caracan or the so-called Carlsbad structure. So after knight h5, you are playing bishop e3. 
And you might ask, I mean, what is this, right? I mean, what is the bishop doing on, eight, on e3? I might ask a different question. What is the knight doing on h5? It's exactly doing nothing. But comparing with the knight on h5, our bishop controls more squares. Yeah, but bishop g5, there's going to be h6. That's a valid question, of course. But what, what are you going to do about h6? And after bishop h4, is going to be g5. And after bishop g3, you also need to understand what is going to happen after some, something funny as a 5. No, I don't think it's really that, that simple. I mean, black, of course, can just take it on g3. Take, take something like, I don't know, maybe something like e6. Computer says f6 and e5 is looking great. I'm not so sure about that, but we don't want to trade the bishop. So this is why I'm suggesting to play. Ah, you mean sort of to provoke to play after this? Maybe. You, you, I'll tell you honestly, maybe it is entirely possible, but I'm not so sure that this h6 is really such a great provocation. Or, or is it a weakness? Or it's actually a useful move for black. For example, after something like you might play bishop g5, h6, bishop e3, and you might have to understand that after uh, some time later, black might just play knight f4 and g5. So g5 might be actually a useful move. It's not really that simple. For the sake of simplicity, I'm suggesting just to play bishop e3 with a very simple idea. So since black just got rid of your bishop from this diagonal, it really makes sense that he's playing queen c7, right? Knight g5. Yeah, I mean, not, not g5 right away, Timbolia. Yeah, definitely. But there might be some idea. Queen c7, knight f4, and then g5. Uh... No, not always uh, in the Carlsbad. In the Carlsbad is this pawn b2, b2, c3, d4. And I really like to explain it that simple, that uh, typically the pawn structure, at least how I was taught to play chess, the pawn structure is like um, a spear. And the edge of the spear, it shows you the direction to which you should play. So if whites, uh, the so-called spear, the so-called sword, whatever you call it, it says direction is this, b2, c3, d4. The direction is the king side. It's really that simple. You have to play in the direction of the king side. So if black is going to play f7, e6, d5, so the spear goes to the opposite. Yeah, yeah, uh, that, that is a known stuff. Uh, it, f7, e6, d5, so the spear shows the direction of the queen side, and this is why typically black is playing a5, b5, b4, trying to create a weakness at the queen side. That simple. Anyway, so here black plays queen c7 with the idea to play knight f4 and try to win one of the bishops. So we don't want to allow this. g3, I think, is quite a risky choice because of the f5 and f4, and bishop h3, and quite a powerful attack. So this is why we need to play rook e1, knight f4, and bishop f1. And it seems this knight on f4, as oddly it may be, it is misplaced. So here, your next threat is you want to play knight e5, and play for really, really strong initiative. So, for example, black does something like, I don't know, maybe bishop g4. That looks quite logical, right? Because this bishop is the only piece which is not playing. So, he plays bishop g4. h3, where are you going to go? Certainly not on h5 because of the g4. Bishop f5. Not so sure already. I think here, okay, here specifically, I can play knight b3 and I can prepare either queen d2 or knight e5 right away. Let me try to remember there was one line I was analyzing in the database, which is currently in the progress. I think it was something like, yeah, I don't remember, unfortunately. I'd have to check obviously what I've written down. The idea was to play. 
So knight e5 is impossible because of bishop f4. Um, bishop e5 takes queen e5. There was some sort of a compensation. But, I mean, you don't have to do this, of course. There is a very simple way around this. After bishop f1, you can just play, I'm sorry, knight b3, queen d2, and this knight is going to go. So whoever said to me that bishop g5 and bishop e3 might be an interesting way to provoke this weakness, here you see that actually if black would have this pawn on h6 and not on h7, here he can actually strengthen the knight's position with g6, g5. So it's not really that simple. So for example, he could try to go very aggressive. h6, g5, f6, e5. And never leave the f4 square. So how might the game actually progress here? Let's say knight h5, bishop e3. Again, e5, it's not a concern. We are getting what we wanted. We just got our eyes on the ball. Thank you, Nandi Chess, for the raid. Appreciate it. Uh, what we are doing here, I'm organizing my weekly bootcamp. Uh, today I'm analyzing the exchange character system, which is a weekly event. Yeah, thank you guys for joining. I really appreciate it. Uh, so it's sort of a theoretical discussion. Uh, I'm trying to advocate some interesting, funny opening likes, lines to play, so I hope you'll like the stuff. And I'm doing this particular show every every Friday. Thank you, guys. Okay, so e5, if black would play, we just take it twice, take stakes, and just try to make a good use of the d4. Uh, outpost something, I don't know, knight f3 or knight b3, position the bishop here, and again, again we remember the rule. We want to get, I mean, we want to trade the dark square bishops. We want to trade our light square bishop for our opponent's knight. And we want to get the knight on d4 against the bad light square bishop on c8. So that is typically the general rule every single time. And then we are trying to target this weakness on d5. So black obviously doesn't have to do this. If he's trying to be funny with f7 and f5, Try to play four. That is a very committal decision. So we just play knight b3, f4, and just, I don't know, either bishop d2 or bishop c1. Yeah, bishop d2 makes sense. And these are very, very big weaknesses. Uh, white already is better. I mean, of course, I can understand that black might think about some funny ideas to attack the king side, but without a proper support, I don't think this is possible. So, knight h5 here, queen c7, rook e1, knight f4, bishop f1, uh, I don't know, maybe bishop f5, looks completely normal, or maybe play bishop g4 right away, h3, then bishop f5, but the point is, we want to play queen d2 next move, or knight e5 the next move, something like rook d8, queen d2, and where is this knight going? Knight e6 is already impossible because of the g4, but typically, let's say, probably already misplayed this position, but let's say black would try to do like this, bishop f5 here, without bishop g4, rook d8, I think I can already play knight e5, knight e6, I'm not so sure, no, knight e6 is impossible here, bishop e5, d takes, and then there's this discovered attack of the queen either here or here black cannot really take on e5 and this is already clearly a better position i mean i don't know i mean can you suggest me a better move i'm just trying to make a normal move look at this position because all i'm looking i mean all i'm suggesting are completely normal human moves it started here so black played this natural g6 bishop g7 and let's assume Black make a very quick short castle. He supposedly knows that bishop f5 is sort of dangerous because of rook e1, knight e5. I'm sorry. Rook e3, rook h2 checkmate. So this is why he's going to try to draw away this bishop from this diagonal. I'm sorry, again. So this is why knight h5 makes sense here. This is why queen c7 makes sense. 
a knight f4 makes sense but the question is what to continue a5 maybe so for example you're suggesting knight i mean bishop f5 knight b3 a5 i play f4 that's another extra weakness how do you continue for black because when you're looking at these positions you need always to have a clear game plan for white it's so many improving moves here queen b6 yeah but that's not even a threat h6 yeah maybe i mean i won't argue but i mean for 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 white it's very easy queen d2 is the next move or knight e5 is the next move f4 g4 every single move is targeted towards the black game so again this is the secret why this line is so popular at the top level between very very strong gms starting with Magnus Carlsen, Fabiano Corona, because the plan is very simple. The plan is very straightforward. You're just attacking the king. The plan is very easy to execute. And although black typically he even already knows, yes, the point, which is exactly my point. And uh, when I'm um, choosing the lines, I, uh, I advocate to play. And since I wrote three databases for modern chess i've wrote trilogy for anti sicilians and um, in every single line i suggest easy to play positions so this is why i'm me personally i'm a great fan of anti sicilians and various offbeat lines because they're easy and uh, since there is no really such big advantage i mean there is a actually uh if you are talking about a bit a global level about uh, theory where is an advantage for white let's say in in the night of in the mainstream night of where is the advantage I, I think there's none to be honest because the theory has developed already to such a level that black is <laughs> thanks to some early h5 black is pretty much holding in every single line so uh, why not play various anti approaches which just give a very easy game if the evaluation in the end is still the same because like i said in the very beginning i and i stand to that belief that i do believe that in modern theory pretty much all of the openings they if the black is playing perfectly they end up with equal positions i mean at least according to computer but what computers don't understand is which position is easier to play so you cannot teach this to computer okay okay so this should be quite clear i mean of course there is some possibility for black to do something else something like b6 yeah but this already gives for white quite a freedom um no i, I mean you don't have to get the worst position with white i mean it's very difficult to get the worst position for white just even get the equal easy to play position it's already great <laughs> right so for example but if black would play b6 this gives you so much freedom at the, at the king side right just play something like rook e1 here um i don't know actually what might be the most precise order the most okay let's try to play maybe maybe 95 takes okay this is quite tricky because it depends at which moment you have to take with the deep pawn because that would give for us an outpost on d4 at which moment you can take with the bishop but either way for example you get this position still this is a very much one-sided game you have all of the pieces joining the action at the king side queen f3 uh, i don't know uh, g4 queen g3 knight f3 knight g5 and so on okay those are probably not the best moves but uh black is not gonna suffer uh, and try to endure this bishop on e5 for example he just tries to get rid of it takes takes queen f4 knight f3 h4 h5 knight e5 and again this bishop is feeling oh so lonely and black of course would love to try to execute this typical idea of a5 b5 b4 but it's easier said than done and uh, since i'm a professional of many years of experience i'll tell you honestly there are many lines in the modern chess where both players they perfectly know what is the computer evaluation for example 
you you're gonna love this one. Uh, it's not it's not Cara. It's from the closed French. I, I know I'm gonna slightly change the topic, but you'll understand what I'm talking about. So for example, uh, I'm sorry, not D4. Yeah. So the closed French. Uh, c5, g3, knight c6, here, 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 e5, here, here, b5, here, what was it, a5, h4, b4, and so on, so forth, so on, so forth. And uh, you would ask to any single GM who has studied this line, what is the evaluation of the position? According to the computer, this position is simply better for black, because... Computer says there's nothing with your attack at the king side. I mean, the attack is just easily stopped, <laughs> right? But when you are playing in an actual game, and I've played actual games against very strong GMs, and you are bringing all of your pieces towards the, his king and trying to build something, it's so difficult to stay calm. It's so difficult. And you just want to defend this king. You don't want to leave it alone. Although, I mean, even very strong GMs, they know this computer evaluation. They just cannot stay and do nothing. And just ignore the king and focus on some pawns at the, at, the, at the queen side. So why this position? Because it is the same. It is the same. The idea is the same. For example, now we are looking at exchange car, right? So today's topic. Takes, takes. Bishop d3, here, whatever. Okay, now we are looking at this knight of six, and uh, let's say g6. Okay, not g6, maybe. Okay, le le I'm still going to insist on g6, knight of three, here, this line. So, so for example, okay, let's, let's have, a, have a look at this line, for example. Uh, let's imagine computer says, oh, so I sound like Yasser. <laughs> Yeah, thank you. Appreciate it. Uh, A. G. Gibelius. Yeah, appreciate it. Uh, so, for example, imagine the computer says here that black is doing excellent and good GMs know that you have to play b5, a5, b4. And while I'm going to be slowly building up my attack at the king side, how can you just stay calm and look how white is attacking? Although, I mean, you know the evaluation of what of the computer because computer is not concerned and this is essential the thing which you cannot teach for computers to be concerned about the king and i work quite a lot of with engines um most uh, notably i'm using i'm not using any lilas or these neural networks i'm old-fashioned guy um i'm using um uh, stockfish and commodore uh, so, for example, Commodore is a super big optimist when it comes to king's safety. <laughs> the king is sort of already exposed, there's a big attack, <laughs> and Commodore says, ah, it's okay, it's <laughs> chill, it's zeros. <laughs> and then you switch on, uh, Stockfish is easily winning. <laughs> so you have to be careful about this, of course. Now, I'm, of course, I'm talking about people who are using um, uh, some professional equipment as uh, chess base, for example, and using the engines uh, to analyze the games, but uh, yeah, so there's obviously differences also in engines evaluation. Okay, anyway, I'm sort of drifting uh, to off topic. Uh, what else is here? So here is also the move queen c7. So after knight of six, ah, wait a second, I did not show you the main line. Yeah, of course, I should have, I should have. I should have showed you the main line. Yeah, we are gonna get to queen c7, I apologize. So after knight of six, so there is still this option to play the old move h3 with a new twist to play bishop e2 if black is going to play bishop f5, but okay. I'm sort of a believer of the bishop f4 move. So if black plays the main move bishop g4, about three GMs are teaching. Who else is teaching this? I don't know. Who is it? Is it some training course, some video course here? I mean, of course, this is quite a popular line. Hikaru is teaching this. For for, for which side? For white or black? I, I didn't know this, actually. And after bishop g4, there's queen b3. 
Ah, Lars Schoner book. Okay. Okay. I'll, I would have to check this then. I'll tell you honestly. Uh, oh, okay. That's why. I'll tell you honestly. There's so much information around. I mean, of course. Of course. It will be ideal to check everything that's been written. It's impossible. I mean, it's getting already impossible because there's so many books, so many video courses, so many um, exploration, uh, explorations in various topical lines that you just cannot keep track. Yeah, so I'm pretty sure that somebody who has analyzed this as a, a, a potential line for what I'm going to publish my database, hopefully in this month, uh, they're just going to miss it as well. <laughs> it's going to be just among uh, the many. But anyway, so here the point of Queen B3. There is quite a famous. <laughs> okay, that's good. Uh, th so there's quite a famous game. Uh, all of this started with a legendary game between Bobby Fischer, who played this against Tigran Petrosian. And can you believe this? 50 years ago. Unbelievable, half a century ago. I mean, time flies, right? <laughs> when having fun. So here they played. Bobby Fischer in 1970, in, I think it was the match U, U, USR against the world. So here, Bishop f4, Bishop g4, Queen b3, Knight a5. Yeah, so this Knight a5. Yeah, the King of 8 game, exactly. Uh, so here, back then, Knight a5 was a topical move and Bobby Fischer played queen a4 check bishop d7 queen c2 so actually this position has some sort of a resemblance to the exchange slav if we would position this pawn on e3 on c3 back to e3 so we would play something like knight f3 knight c3 show castle knight e5 and try to make uh, a slightly better life because of this powerful light square bishop opposing the bishop on d7 and in the game what Petrosian tried he played e6 which was okay move back then now people already know this is not a good move and after e6 knight f3 queen b6 Petrosian had this idea in his mind to play bishop b5 to exchange the bishops here back then 50 years ago Bobby Fischer found a novelty a4 yeah I mean I don't know if he found it on the board or it was analysis yeah most likely it was analysis done before the game and the game progressed like this so a4 white is stopping the light square bishop trade here so avoiding knight b4 ideas of course that's uh, quite important and again look at this look at this i mean bobby fisher knew this 50 years ago that you have to avoid to, to trade this bishop uh, on a four that after knight h5 you don't retreat either bishop g5 or bishop g3 but bishop e3 and yeah hc okay i don't know about this how accurate is this and essentially uh tigran vartanovich he missed this idea to play knight e5 and white developed yeah i, I mean i don't know what was king of eight to be honest i have not uh read any um post-game interviews with the former world champion Petrosian, why he thought that King of Fate actually is a playable move, while uh, Short Castle was, I mean, not great, because White essentially is organizing an attack there, but still, I mean, it was better. But, I mean, he did play King of Fate, and after f4, Fischer developed a very, very dangerous attack, and, and Petrosian didn't hold for long. So that was quite a famous game. But what is interesting about this line, if you go back, uh, did I say to you that this line is old? <laughs> it's being revisited right now. I mean, although at not really at the highest level, some very strong GMs have started to play this again, although in some accelerated game, I mean, rapid games, blitz games, because it's easier to play them. And uh, after bishop d7, queen c2, there was this very interesting move. Let me... Oh, okay, I did not copy it. You could try to play a6 right away. 
uh, still insisting to play bishop b5. And the point is, if white will play a4, which is still an okay move, black plays bishop g4, bishop h5, and bishop g6. And takes a way for uh, white at some moment to give this uh, check on uh, b5. And white can quite little do it here, actually. I mean, he's still sort of bare. Sort of. Black just wasted something like two tempos. But it's not easy to prove. Something like takes, takes. Castle here, knight e5, bishop e7. And for black, it's going to be maybe easier to play. Uh, after the short castle, b5, b4, and try to organize uh, something here at the queen side. Yeah, I mean, although... This doublet pawn is really a great target for white. I believe we are going to have a chance to talk about the rising positions. When it might seem that it's actually solid for black, it is a weakness. And it is a target that white can try to exploit. Okay. So, but here, of course, I believe there was a very high level game between... I'll try to remember... Levon Aronian was playing against Sergei Karyakin or Sergei Karyakin was playing against Levon Aronian? Uh, I don't remember. I think it was Karyakin. I think so. Or maybe it was Aronian. <laughs> Sorry. I mean, I don't remember. I just remember who were the players. Not necessarily uh, who was playing with which color. And here the idea was that after A6... I think it was Aronian with white. I think so. He allowed bishop b5 to be played. And he played knight d2. Bishop b5. I think so. Or maybe Karyakin started with the e6. And then he played bishop b5. I think it was like this. Yeah. And takes, takes. a3 to stop any b4 from happening. Uh, what was the game? I don't remember already. Castle, castle. And essentially... We ask the engine, how do you evaluate this position? Do you know what is the engine's evaluation? Equal. It's equal. But when you ask, what is, uh, for example, White's plan? Very easy. Uh, I wouldn't say black is bare. I mean, for, uh, for white, it's very easy. We just want to play, typically position the knight to d3, because that is the general rule. In Cosbet structures, you want to position the knight on d3. Why on d3? Because it, can, it defends everything. The most weakest uh, pawn on b2, b4 square, e, c5, e5, f4, I mean, everything around. The knight on d3 is the best position to position your knight. Okay, let's imagine we are doing this. For example, knight e5, knight c6, blah, 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 whatever. I don't know. Whatever. And white has a free attack at the king side. Uh, let me ask you this. What is black's plan? What do you do here? And this is what computer is unable to explain. Because computer says, I mean, this is equal, this is okay, blah, 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 zero, zero, everything is great, you have a, um, you have a square on c4, but can you suggest me an actual game plan here for black? Because b4, you can just forget it, it's not going to work. e5, how? It's not going to work. So what do you do? I mean, what do you do? You can position the knight on c4. And then? I mean, white has the knight on d3. What are you doing then? Can you imagine Karyakin lost the game? Of course. It's not easy. Uh, of course, in a classical game, he, he would call. Yeah, because, I mean, he would just uh, find some very solid uh, setup, which he can uh, put up. And since he's such a brilliant defensive player, he perfectly understands uh, the positional nuances. I believe he would call, probably in most of the occasions. But in a blitz game, when you have to just sit and watch. While white is slowly preparing an attack at the king's side. Something like g3, king g2, knight f3, queen e2, rook e1, h4, h5. And you're just watching. 
And you have no counterplay because, again, in these typical positions, the typical counterplay for black is he would have the pawn on a6, b5, a5 on b4. So again, I think this is one of those positions which computer doesn't really understand. Um, in king, a queen's gambit declined, maybe, maybe, yeah, because I'll have to check exactly which particular line you're talking about. I understand there's also various uh, colors, but structures, of course. But I think the ideas they are are quite um, um, universal. Essentially, which uh, it's been like this. Uh, tip, tip, uh, I once was uh, talking about this with a friend of mine and my teammate in Latvian team, Igor Kovalenko, who was uh, who is still, I believe, world top 100 player, a very nice guy. Uh, he was laughing that people are discovering, for example, in um, in the English opening, a brilliant new idea, and everybody's like, "Wow, it's great, it's great!" And they don't realize it's already been played in Sicilian for years. <laughs> It's exactly the same setup. I mean, e4, c5, it's the same. It's just one tempo. So why play c4, e5? He exploits the same idea with an extra tempo. And suddenly it's like everybody is excited about this, right? I mean, but this idea was already known, but in a, exactly the same position with colors reversed, sometimes mirror to the other side, but the idea is the same. The structure is the same. So again, I think it's a great idea to master the Cosbit structure, because the Cosbit structure is quite popular in many lines, in many variations. I think here also black is safe. Yeah, what I was asking, what is black's plan? And uh, even better and better players, they care more about uh, not exactly the objective evaluation of the position, but if I have a plan. So for example, if I have a choice, and I have to choose between a position which is equal according to the computer, but I don't know what to do. I mean, I just I just sit and watch. Computer says, ah, it's okay. Commodore says, it's okay. It's good, good, good. Or I have to choose a slightly worse position and it's easy. What do you think I'll choose? Of course, I'll choose the latter. I'll choose the second choice. I'll choose the slightly worse position, but again, I'll understand what I have to do here. And... Uh, I think this is why <laughs> humanity still have some hopes and uh, we cannot really blindly trust what the engines are saying and we have to use engines as, as a tool. We are asking the engines advice, not uh, advice if this is working, not what to do. Um, uh, which article? Midnight Reno? About engines? Yeah, of course, it's a very big topic. I mean, I would love to talk about this. Uh, I'll think about this. This is actually quite an interesting topic to talk about engines, how engines operate, um, what are the uh, strongest perks and the weakest sides of engines, how you can exploit them, how people, how chess professionals are using them in, on a daily basis. So this is quite interesting stuff. Yeah, but... I will be talking for two hours and not showing probably a single position. No, although I'm probably, yeah, I would have to prepare some actual positions. Yeah, I think it is doable. Yeah, Midnight Reno, exactly what you said. Equal, but no plan. That's a very valid point. And engines don't understand this. Okay, let's move forward. And um, here, for example, after Queen C2, I believe there was also Alexander Ryazantsev, uh, who I think he is still quite a strong GM, but he's been coaching the Russian female team, I think. I don't know, maybe the juniors, I don't remember. He was he was uh, teaching somebody at... Uh, t at uh, um, teaching the national team, whichever team it was, I don't remember, female team or uh, men's team of Russia. And he also, I saw some blitz games he was playing and he also was trying to re revive this idea and not to play E6. I think he played here, 
think he played queen b6. No, wait. Ah, wait, I think he played knight h5 like this. So that, that was quite a modern stuff. I mean, look at this. <laughs> engines suck position. I, I wouldn't say that. I think engines are a great tool if you know how to use them. So I think, yeah, results of, was he played here, knight h5, I think so. That was quite an interesting idea. And after bishop e3, queen c7, uh, with the idea to retreat knight c6, and still play those idea with knight f4. But again, you can just um, can he continue to play positionally, something like, uh, I don't know, I mean, something like knight e2, uh, I'm sorry, no, not, not knight e2. I think here the line was knight f3, so knight e4 is bad, takes, takes, and knight e5, and because of this bishop, and the threat of bishop b5 check black is risking very much. So I think the line was here. Uh, knight c6 first to stop knight e5 from happening. And after short castle, knight f4. I think so. Yeah, now I try to remember. I think after the trade here, the trade was necessary. And uh, still, sort of black is worse. Because we are playing rook e3, and what was it, g3 and knight e5, I think so, at least I tried to remember this, because I checked this line some time ago, and we are essentially playing against this bad bishop, so black might play something like this, I don't know, rook e3, um, yeah, short castle is impossible here, g3, here, here, and the next move is knight e5, and a and a four. So that's a traditional idea. Okay. So it started with the game 50 years ago. Um, Bobby Fischer against the Grand Petrosian. The fight of the future world champion against the previous world champion. No, wait a second. Yeah, okay, okay, yeah. Fischer in 70 was still a future world champion. <laughs> I almost mixed up. He, he won obviously in 1972 the title. So here, um, yeah, so this line is clear. And the main stuff here after queen v3, there, there are two kinds of moves here. Black and play queen c8 and queen d7. And uh, you might have actually seen there is a third move. It was quite a, quite an amazing game. What was it? When uh, Samuel Shanklin became US uh, champion in 2018. I think maybe 70. No, I think it was 80. And he scored plus six. Yeah, and Fabi, he came with plus five. Yeah, thank you, Assassin. Uh, and um, that was quite incredible. With, with plus five in US Championship around Roman tournament, you're going to get the first place. Okay, and in the game, I'm going to copy paste you. It was quite a groundbreaking, groundbreaking game. At least at the time. Yeah, 2018. I just checked it. Uh, what they played. This was the game of the last round of United States Championship. So at the stake is the gold medal. So Samuel Shanklin was playing with White. I believe he was half a point ahead of Fabiano Carana. So definitely he wasn't interested in a tie break with one of the world's best players. So he was going for the win. And he chose exactly this line. Bishop g4, queen b3, and e5. I don't remember how popular was this move. e5 in 2018. What I remember... I wonder. Yeah, I wonder. Liang, I wonder. Um, what I remember... I mean, not what I remember, but... Uh, this line is quite popular in online blitz. Everybody, I mean, for some reason, believes that you can actually play e5 here. That it, but already nobody is surprised who has been following the theory here that e5 is a known move. And the point is... What was the point after bishop e5? I try to remember. I think it was... Takes, takes, and knight d7, if I remember. There was some sort of a big activity take and 
and bishop b6 i think so i don't remember <laughs> i just uh for some reason i i forgot to check it but black is okay here so the main line here after e5 is an even incredible move more incredible move h3 so if you take immediately d takes on e5 black plays knight h5 the bishop e3 and recaptures the spawn and still he is playing with an isolated pawn oh wait a second wasn't it bishop d7 pretty sure it was sorry not bishop d7 knight c6 yeah so knight c6 and uh, still black is sort of sort of equal but i mean we know better right uh, still he has this isolated pawn on on d5 but here sam he played a very nice move he played h3 which i think was sort of as a surprise for a wonder and black had to pick up yet another strange move <laughs> knight a5 i mean this is crazy so he had to understand that queen uh, knight a5 has to be included and the point is here now he can take and take on g4 and white has no access to queen b7 but still this position is sort of worse for black i think so at least uh, the main stuff here was f3 i think takes takes and g3 followed by knight e2 knight f3 we have a very strong bishop and black spawn on d5 is sort of a weakness i think one of the main lines was something like this um knight c4 takes takes here uh yeah, i don't remember h5 knight of three something and because we have a passed pawn and this is sort of a weak pawn because we are going to play a4 i came to the conclusion that white is better here and it's actually at the top level not being played anymore i think this line is sort of closed but what i wonder he played in the game he played e takes h takes now he has no time to play knight a5 because of the check he has no time to take knight g4 because of the take on b7 so he gave a check king f1 exclamation mark knight g4 is impossible because of the knight e2 rook e1 uh quite a big annoyance and typically i already i think i won already a couple of games in online blitz long castle bishop f5 and black resigns <laughs> black just blunders a piece on g4 it's quite an uncommon idea especially in blitz when you're playing automatically grab the pawn make a long castle escape this rookie one incoming and just blunder a piece on a five and uh, the game progressed as this g5 okay rookie one g5 bishop a2 and uh, shanklin played really a powerful game yeah so he completely destroyed black and won the world champion uh, uh, United States Championship title but if we go back to all of this I think Queen B3 E5 it serves sort of as a surprise element so if white is aware of this then probably black shouldn't do this uh, if white is not then in the best scenario what can happen here is white will just take here um what was it i mean oh, i'm sorry not d5 d5 for example where was this line with the isolated pawn i already forgot ah takes knight yeah here knight h5 bishop e3 knight e5 bishop b5 and knight c6 wouldn't exactly say it's really such a great achievement but okay i mean black supposedly is quite active okay let's go forward and uh here typically black has two moves two main moves either queen c8 or queen d7 knight a5 is the so-called old move according to fisher versus uh petrosian queen c8 i believe that is the most careful move 
But again, for what is very easy game. For example, knight d2, e6, knight f3. I'm not going to talk about nuances here, what happens if black plays bishop h5 and g6. I know this is quite topical stuff. I've analyzed this in detail. So I'll just mention that here the a brilliant idea which I sort of borrow from correspondence chess is that after e6, knight f3, if black is playing bishop h5 right away, you have an amazing resource, bishop b5. I don't think I've seen this before, before I was doing this stuff uh, for modern chess. Uh, so the idea is, essentially black has to do something. So if let's imagine he's doing nothing. He plays bishop b7, whatever, completely normal. So now we play knight e5, castle. We happily trade this bishop. And just focus at the queen side. Uh, I'm sorry, at the king side. That's it. Bishop d3, knight f3, g3, king g2, h4, rook h1, knight e5, h5, checkmate. Very easy. And uh, if black is trying to do something at the queen side, b5, a5, I mean, we can include a3 at the same time. And black is just again watching how white is starting quite a powerful attack. So this bishop b5 was quite a discovery for me. And uh, let's imagine, so this knight e5, he's sort of concerned about this, he plays a6. Now we just take it here. If black takes with the queen, we have to avoid queen b5, a4, here, I think it was a rook c1 here and c4 oh wait a second I, oh sorry yeah knight e5 first knight e5 queen c8 and then c4 so d takes knight c4 because of the black square weaknesses on b6 black is suffering i mean okay black could try to take with the b pawn after a a6 takes takes now we are doing essentially the same Queen a4, rook c1, c4, knight e5, this is a weakness. So knight e5 is already a big threat to win the pawn. Knight e7. There was a correspondence game, I think. I don't remember who was playing. c4, rook c1, I think it was like this. Here, here. Take... Take, take, knight e5, followed by rook c1, rook c4, and white won the game. So black is not equalizing here. I mean, anyway, all of that is completely irrelevant. I think this is just a great idea. If black is rushing with this bishop g4, bishop h5, bishop g6, it really reminds me of this bishop e4 idea, which was in one of the other lines for for white, this so-called, in this old line, h3, the new movement of bishop e2, and here I think this is sort of exactly the same, the similar idea to avoid this bishop trade, since black is wasting so much time on the bishop, we can do the same. So bishop b5 changes the character quite a bit, so knight e5 is incoming, a6 is not so really so easy, so this is why um, there was a game between... Magnus Carlsen against Wesley So. You might have seen it, actually. Uh, they were playing in the Abbey... How it was called? Lindori's Abbey. Yeah, Lindori's Abbey Super Tournament, one of those Magnus and Friends tournaments. And uh, it was, I believe, the last game of the so-called mini-match. And Magnus was playing against Wesley. Now, Wesley was black, Magnus was white. And they play like this. Um, I think the most accurate order of the moves is like this. E6, knight f3. Because again, if white, uh, if black rushes with bishop h5, you are doing the same. Bishop g6, again, is bishop b5. Exactly the same. Exactly the same idea of here. Queen a4, if black goes here, takes. B takes again is the same. Queen takes again is the same. 
exactly, exactly, exactly the same. Okay, maybe I have to include a4. But essentially nothing changes. I think this bishop bifa was what, what a big discovery, at least for me. So this is why it's very accurate for black to do it with the proper order moves. So after bishop knight to e6, knight f3 now, bishop h5, and after short cast, like he still sort of cannot really play bishop g6 because of bishop b5. Now he plays bishop e7. So it's really, really, I think so. These guys at the top level, they know this. So this is why they're playing this order of the moves. And um, so now bishop b5 makes no sense because black is just making a castle on knight e5. We are not targeting this bishop. Like I said numerous times, we would love to trade this knight for this bishop. Absolutely. So if black is doing this, bishop takes on f3 at some time. Just thank you. Thank you for doing this. I'm going to rear out the queen here on c2, e2, knight e5. I'm just going to focus on the king side attack. Very, very simple. Right. Uh, so in the game, Carlsen against Wesley. So I think it was like this. Bishop h5, short castle, bishop e7. Rook e1. Because you cannot really avoid this bishop g6 from happening. Here. Takes, takes, and the game progressed like this. Carlsen played h4, knight h5, bishop h2, knight f6, bishop f4, and they agreed to draw. But I think Carlsen played this because he was happy with the draw. I mean, for him it was fixing the win in the, in the game, in, in the match. And uh, Wesley, he was just sort of demoralized probably, and he did not continue. But there are other interest continuations here. Instead of this h4, I think it's quite interesting to repeat the game between Jan Krzysztof Duda and uh, Jordan Van Forest from which year's Tata Steel Chess 2020, I think. I think so. This year. I think so. Did I play it this year in January? I think so. Yeah, it was this year. Either last year. I mean... Time flies so quickly, I don't remember. And the idea was to play still the same. g3, king g2, knight e5, h4, rook h1. Essentially black is going to make a castle. And just push h5. And still insisting for black to take on e5. We are going to recapture with the d pawn. And h5 should become quite a viable threat. Hi, Yan Miang. Yeah, the chat went quite quiet. Is everybody very closely following or just trying to digest what I'm talking about here. <laughs> of course, you can ask some questions. Uh, I would appreciate it. If something is not clear, maybe I can address some some points which I might have, might have uh, rushed. Yeah, I mean, sometimes you have to do this. You, you can definitely... <laughs> yeah, you can definitely give me some feedback because this is a typical, typical mistake for GMs. Yeah, they start to speak at the GM level. Quantum physics, blah, blah, blah. <laughs> and uh, sometimes you just have to like scale it down. Um, and, uh, forgetting, I'm not talking with GMs, right? <laughs> yeah, I'm talking with uh, the general audience. And so it's quite important for me to explain difficult stuff in simple words. I hope I'm doing quite all right. Anyway, uh, so this idea is to play g3. It's quite popular and there are many interesting moves. You might remember there was a game between Vladimir Kramnik against Vasily Ivanchuk. And Kramnik, I believe, was the first who played against Ivanchuk in 2017 World Cup in Belize. He was the first one to try h4 immediately. So the idea is still to play g3, king g2, knight e5, and Ivanchuk played whatever, a6, b5, something. And Kramnik at some moment pushed c4, and the game was very, very wild, and Ivanchuk actually came on the top. So this is why Wesley played knight h5 here and knight f6. And the problem is, if white is not repeating the moves, it's very difficult for him just to come up with a move here. So this is why I think it's not a great line for white, unless white is happy with the draw. And I'm pretty sure Magnus knew what he was doing. Okay. But let's say black does nothing 
Um, he knows nothing about this, and he just plays it in a normal fashion. Other queen c8, knight d2, here, knight f3, bishop here, castle, castle, and queen c2. I think so. What was the more accurate? Doesn't matter. Yeah, I think so. Queen c2. And again, we are threatened to play knight e5. At any given time, white is happy to allow the trade on f3. And after bishop h5, knight e5, black cannot take. Because we are going to take with the d pawn, this pawn is going to be lost on h7. And if black is playing bishop g6, which is a completely normal move. There was quite a famous game. I think it was between Ferenc Berkes, a very strong GM from Hungary against... Luke McShane, I think so. I don't remember which tournament they were playing. And Berkes just totally killed Black. Just zero, zero, zero chances. So the game progressed something like this. Takes, takes. Knight f3. Uh, whatever Black was doing here, here. Here. Yeah, I just don't remember the exact moves. Here, 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 here. Uh, I think it was even G for h5. And Black just got crushed completely mercilessly and uh, it wasn't really easy to progress anything uh, good for black yeah so again i mean white is simply concentrating on the king side attack every single piece is looking towards the action at the king side so this is the reason why black is actually making an early bishop h5 bishop g6 this is the reason why wesley saw is playing this so if somebody was looking at this from the black's perspective, I mean, no, you know. But I mean, still the arising position, even if black manages to play bishop h5 from bishop g6, is quite interesting. But again, I mean, computer says equal. So it's not really like that. Okay. And then there's the second move, queen d7. And typically the idea is involved to play bishop d6. Knight f3. Again, we are quite happy to allow the trade. Bishop d6. What was the more popular continuation here? Wasn't it bishop g3? No, I don't remember. Maybe bishop g3. But the point is, this pawn is quite dangerous to take. And again, you're just simply concentrating at the king side attack. Knight d7. And... I think it was something like queen c2, h6, h3 takes, takes again, again, and again. White gets easy game at the king's head. I mean, of course, it's much, much more complicated than that. There's many more lines, but still, essentially, the idea is the same. You are winning the light square bishop, and then you are focusing at the action at the king's side. So black needs to be quite accurate here. Maybe something like castle, castle. Um, maybe it was like this. Bishop h5. Knight e5. And bishop g6. Maybe it was like this. And uh, there was quite a notable game between another one, Forrest. But this time it was the younger brother, Lucas. And he played, I believe... I'm not telling from memory. In the Dutch... No, it was the Dutch champ. I think it was Dutch championship, whichever year. 2019. But it was with the rook on e1, I think. Fe1. Here, here, rook e1, knight here, knight e5 here. He found a very interesting idea. He took with a bishop. He played a 4. <laughs> and simply went for a brute force attack. Here, here, here. Here, here. The vehicle collapsed. I mean, for white it was quite an obvious, a very simple plan, and he was trying to do something. I don't remember. 97. Why well, my arrows are looking different now suddenly? Strange. And uh, you can find the game. It was quite simple, quite straightforward. White is not risking anything. This weakness on, a four, on e4 is easily uh, defended. And uh, this idea to position the knight on e5 and strengthen its position by playing f2, f4 is quite a common idea. 
Okay. And finally, I would like to mention, of course, uh, uh, the other one of the most played moves here after c3, it is queen c7. And again, if you want to take the lazy path here, it's completely understandable, it's completely fine. You still can play knight f3. I'm sorry, not knight f3. h3 and knight f3. So, for example, h3. If black is playing e5, again, again, again. Uh, yeah, either bishop c2 or knight f3 right away. Play against this isolated pawn. Uh, yeah, so again, it might just transpose to one of this so-called old but modern stuff after bishop f5, bishop e2. So this means there's something else. So after queen c7, there's quite a modern line with knight e2. Knight e2 idea is linked directly with this idea to play bishop f4 right away and win a tempo. Although I have to admit the knight on e2 is not doing much. So black plays bishop g4. And now, I mean, you don't want to play bishop f4. Because, I mean, black can just play queen f4. Takes, takes, and there's nothing. I mean, maybe it's completely playable, but this position is just equal. So that's why black plays bishop uh, g4. It would be interesting to play f3. But this is the old move. And after f3, bishop d7, black is playing e5. And although we are getting an isolated pawn on d5 i believe this position is evaluated as equal but i think i'm sort of speaking against me like uh, again because for after some time the so-called alt theory gets re-evaluated so while right now this f3 bishop d7 is sort of considered to be an equal position it might just be that it's gonna resurface after some time later and uh, I mean, it's still completely playable. Why not uh, bishop h5? Because of knight f4. Knight f4. What was the line here? Knight f6 and something like takes, takes. And again, we are playing short castle f4, g3, knight e2, knight f3. And again, very easy game at the king side. We have a very powerful bishop on d3. And um, good attacking chances. But what I wanted to suggest here is a short cast. And the point is, if black plays the traditional e6, we are playing queen e1. But I'll tell you honestly, this is already known stuff. People have been playing this for years already. I mean, at least several years. So it's not like you're going to surprise somebody uh, with Queen Ewan. I mean, although, I mean, I still keep finding people playing online Blitz who don't know this idea. And the idea is uh, quite simple. We want to play f3 and queen h4. So bishop d6. I won maybe three or four games in online Blitz exactly in this line. We were playing f3. You cannot take it because king h1, queen h4 is going to be double attack. Bishop f5 is just, I'm sorry, jumping under a discovered check. I'm not sure actually, is it 9 g3? But anyway, I mean, there is this annoyance. Bishop h5, queen h4. And here's the point. Bishop g6. Black has to take the f pawn. Because h pawn, there is the spin. And after f takes on g6, black is sort of suffering because of the pawn on e6. Yeah, well, I think it was rook e1, the best move here. I'm just trying to remember. It's something like knight f4 was the next move. Yeah, I sort of already uh, forgot. Can't black play knight of six? Yeah, he can. Exactly. That's a very valid question. 
my memory might be failing me, but I think even Anand once fell into this trap. It might just be in some Blitz game, but I think I remember this. Um, okay, I see so. Uh, okay. So here, if knight of six, we are playing bishop g5, and the threat is just to win a piece. So bishop g6, takes, 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 takes here, <coughs> and we are simply enjoying an extra pawn. Yeah, so, I mean, but... The idea of f3, it starts with queen e1. You don't start with f3 and then queen e1. You have to play queen e1 first. Because it also, let me go back for a few moments. Because it also avoids the spin. You are freeing the knight. And there's many interesting other alternatives. For example, here, uh, bishop d6 obviously is a slight mistake. And... There is a move knight of six, um, f3 here, queen h4. Everybody knows this already. Pretty much everybody who's playing the caro at a regular level. For example, one of the biggest experts here, I believe, is Alexey Dreyev. And he was one of the first who found rook g8. There's some crazy lines here. Bishop h7. What was it? Bishop h7. Wait a second. Ah, and bishop f3. Yeah. Bishop h7, bishop f3, rook f3, rook h8. I even gave this position to some of my students to make a homework to analyze. So I was sort of taunting them and asking them to understand if this is playable or not. It's completely crazy, completely crazy. But I believe some very strong players have deep analysis here. But you don't have to do this. Yeah, bishop g5, yeah, bishop g5. So the point of rook g8 is black wants to play bishop g6. Uh, bishop g6, he has access to h takes on g6. But this f3 and queen h4, everybody knows this, but not so many know. I move bishop g5. I'll tell you this. When I started to write this database, this was one of the... I, I believe this was a very rare move. It was um, the beginning of 2020, end of 2019, something like this. And uh, there was maybe one game, Kobali, uh, Mikhail from Russia, the uh, national uh, youth team coach. I believe he played maybe one game. And that was pretty much it. So this bishop g5. So the idea is to trick the opponent. So if opponent thinks, I mean, what is this? He plays bishop d6. <laughs> you sort of change the order of the moves and trick your opponent exactly in the same idea. Uh, so in the same trap. So there is obviously a number of uh, continuations, but I believe the best continuation here was bishop h5, f4, and now take bishop e2. <laughs> if you don't know this, this is quite impossible to pick up. And if black tries to take on e2 right away, he is aware of this idea of f3, queen h4. He can take it. And this again gives white quite a lot of freedom to organize an easy kingside attack because we are having this very powerful bishop on d3. So if white would ever make a short castle, this is just everything, everything just goes forward. Here, f, I'm sorry, f4, rook e1, rook f3, rook h3, knight f3, knight e5. And seemingly black made all of the normal looking moves and maybe suddenly he's lost already. So it's not really that easy. So for white, this uh, standard kingside attack is very easy to play out. So it really takes a, a knowledgeable and strong player to carefully navigate the maze and not to get in trouble with black. Yeah, I mean, of course, there's many tricky lines here, how black can try to play. For example, there was this crazy line. 
think it was bishop e7 f3 bishop h5 queen h4 and king d7 <laughs> no wait was it like this yeah king d7 i think so <laughs> and after bishop f6 bishop g6 that's computer stuff totally but even here black is not uh, making equality so so if you're interested in details you're, you're gonna have to get my database anyway i'll announce it when it's gonna be released so there's quite interesting quite a lot of interesting stuff yeah and there for example there's also this uh, early no here early bishop h5 so this early bishop h5 bishop g6 in the cosmet structures is quite a common idea for black first to eliminate the light square bishop on d3 which is typically causing for black headache and they just normally develop pieces e6 knight of six bishop d6 or bishop e7 doesn't matter uh, but here the typical idea for white is to play four to meet bishop g6 with the five uh, e6 has to be played queen e1 still the same idea to play queen h4 i think it was bishop d6 knight g3 still f5 after bishop g6 is threatening and after knight f6 take take here and uh, i think this is also quite important position to which if you study this how to properly play this out you can employ this in many order of the moves and many variations because many lines come down exactly to this position so you want to play here 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 and depends knight goes to g5 knight goes to e5 you organize some kind of attack at the at, uh, king side so let's say black is doing something like this this yeah this is of course oh, i'm sorry g6 here f5 this is one of the most critical stuff so black rearranges the knight to e4 but you are focusing on the activity at the king side with g4 everything doubles on the g files so i think still black is sort of suffering I mean, of course, in the end, probably with a perfect, perfect defense, uh, black is holding. Yeah, so uh, that that that's what it is. So you beat Stockfish. <laughs> what depth did he have? <clears throat> okay. Um. So, as a final touch, I would like to mention couple of interesting sidelines are oh, very easy okay you mean it was very easy to beat or it was a very easy difficulty <laughs> i don't think it is so easy to beat a stockfish is it all right uh so here there is uh, quite an interesting alternative which is pretty much reserved for blitz between quite strong gms uh it starts like this as well knight f3 d5 so you can still switch to the two knights variation but okay for the sake of simplicity takes takes and either play d4 either play knight e5 right away i mean this is weird this is weird stuff i mean what is this i mean what is knight e5 but if you are not prepared with black nah, i don't know i don't know it depends how you are playing this out i think it's uh, quite a yeah, yeah knight e5 but very strong gm have uh, gms have played this <laughs> no not scholars uh they're aiming for the same position which i just showed you before let me go there knight c6 i mean knight c6 of course is not mandatory but let's for the sake of simplicity let's go there bishop b5 of course there's queen b6 there's queen c7 i've analyzed all of this but let's say black is doing this the most obvious move takes takes here let's say like this 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 here 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 now didn't we see this position already before it's 
familiar, right? All of the ideas are exactly the same. So we can still try to push a 4, knight a2, knight f3, g3, a g3 just to protect the pawn on a 4. Or avoid the 4, play knight a2, knight f3, rook e1, bishop g5, knight e5. Easy game. Okay, let's try a different order of the moves. So for example, after knight e5, let's start knight f6, d4. Knight a6 here again the same. If black plays e5, please go ahead play with an isolated pawn. Nobody minds. I mean, certainly not white. So it's not, again, white uh, black has to do either e6 or g6, and again we are playing knight e2, knight f3 or f2, knight e2, knight f3, knight e5, and very easy, straightforward game. Um, yeah, so of course there is various nuances. Black can try to play a6. He can try to play queen b6, c4. I mean, there's many, many interesting lines. It's so not so really explored, but uh, essentially black, I mean, is having an equal position, but it can be quite surprising for him. So what is happening else here? There's also this order of the moves, for example. So you can do it also here. d4, d5, takes, takes. And now play knight f3 with the next move, knight e5. Knight a6 and again knight e5. Also this is playable. With the idea that if black takes on e5, you're enjoying really a great French position. Bishop d3, short castle, that's it. And uh, something like this, pieces develop like this. And again, a free attack at the king set. And uh, black is uh, sort of suffering again because of this bishop. It's nowhere to position it. It's not going to land on g4. So if black does something like, I don't know, again, knight of six, again, you play bishop b5. And you get the same position. So essentially, when you master the cosmic structure, when you master this uh, so-called, when you get the light square bishop through, is it h5, g6, or through d7, you can employ the same idea, the same pattern, over and over and over. So that's why it's so popular. And then there's this game between, again, Samuel Shankland, who played it in 2018 Olympiad against, who was it? Let me check it. A Polish guy, I keep always forgetting his name. Um, Tomczak, yeah, Jacek Tomczak, quite a strong GM, 2600 level. And they play it like this, after knight c6. <laughs> and when I first saw this, I was quite amused. I mean, this is essentially some kind of uh, Ra Lopez, right? e4, e5, knight f3, knight c6, bishop b5. And uh, of course, computer says equal, equal. Yeah, Queen of F3, that's 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 great. You're gonna remember remember this, but I'll tell you honestly, people who have studied this, they sort of know this, but I, I think still this is a great attempt because there's so many people around who don't know this. And here the game actually progressed. Let me uh, show it to you. Um, <clears throat> yeah, so the game progressed like this: takes, takes. Bishop b5. So Tomczak went for the most critical line. Uh, bishop d2, queen d8, knight. Yeah, knight e5. That was quite spectacular. Queen sacrifice. Bishop d1 is knight a6, winning some material with extra. Yeah, that was quite. What an impressive and spectacular game. I found a way for black to equalize, of course. But I think this bishop b5 is sort of neglected. And it's quite interesting uh, line to play as well. I'm not so sure if I'm going to include this in my database, but I have some analysis there. So, And again, I mean, it, it gives quite uh, unorthodox uh, position. So queen a5 was a very... Um, challenging approach. So if black would play a knight of six, I'm pretty sure 
Oh, oh, although, wait a second, it wasn't only 95 takes takes and C3, not only this, there was al also alternative C4, D takes and some kind of a pawn of position after knight C3, yeah. Now I remember, I mean it's been some time and I've checked this line, pretty sure Shankland had some very deep analysis here, especially since he was playing this in Olympiad against such a strong team as Poland. But I don't think he has played it ever since before, at least at the classical game level. Okay, okay. Right, I, I believe this is it. I uh, managed to tell the most of this. So if you have some final questions, I'll happily answer them. Otherwise, I'm about to finish. And uh, yeah, so my next bootcamp is gonna be next Friday most likely most likely unless there's gonna be some changes so uh, yeah please follow my channel schedule about my streams Stafford Gambit what is Stafford Gambit <laughs> I even know what is a bot as Gambit but what is Stafford Gambit yeah sure shoot what is the question i don't know what is the stafford gambit i mean if you think it's an interesting option and your opponent is caught of guard go for it the russian game i don't know what that is um you know, but these types of positions, Midnight, Reno, it not really, they're not really uh, tempo dependent. You just have to get particular position. So one tempo here and there, it doesn't matter. So for example, black is also wasting sometimes bishop, a, bishop g4, bishop h5, bishop g6, just to trade this bishop, uh, just to achieve the positional gain. And also white is sort of wasting time with this... Uh, uh, 95 and 97 for example there i did not show you this there's also this line um takes takes here c3 here i'm oh, oh, sorry not c4 definitely c3 queen c7 90 to bishop g4 castle e6 queen e1 but queen e1 is also a waste of time right so if black here takes bishop e2 we still take with the queen we sort of waste the time but we managed to get a favorable trade and we still get this very powerful light square bishop on d3 and we just continue with the typical idea so you might reach the same position with plus minus one tempo i don't think it really matters that much because computer is going to say the same it's equal it's equal it's equal it just doesn't understand and again i stand to what i said i believe this spawn structure shows you the direction which you should play b2 c3 d4 that means you have to target the king side f7 e6 d4 for black means he has to target the queen side as simple as that okay yeah so uh, yeah let me remind you again while i'm finishing um i have a sub goal so if you like the content i would appreciate you would sub subscribe to the channel uh, with the subs, I will organize um, a special symbol, which I'm planning to stream with the subs. But I have already been asked, not once, if I'm going to organize a game. Um, uh, game so technical details, it's going to be a classical time control. Let's say one hour and something and plus 20 or 30 seconds for the game, so that every opponent has time to think. But I'll definitely... I'll definitely organize also sub games between another streamers uh, subscribers or PayPal. I mean, there's several options. <laughs> yeah, you can also use Amazon Prime, but I, I don't know about this. I have not really investigated. Supposedly, everyone who has Amazon Prime membership, they can use some kind of a free subscription, but I don't know how it works. Supposedly you have one token you can use. I've heard it. I haven't really investigated this. I just know it's supposedly possible. 
And after I'm gonna, <laughs> okay, do this. After you're gonna, after I'm gonna organize this um, um, simul with the subscribers. Yeah, uh, then uh, then um, I'll do sub games definitely. Uh, I'll uh, find a friendly streamer. I'm, I already thought about perhaps I could do it like with uh, Yevgeny Miroshnichenko. He is a, a colleague of mine, and we have made actually some uh, streams together doing the weekly puzzle fix. So it could be like this. I mean, my subs are playing against his subs, so that it's interesting for um, uh, both the players who are playing. You're not playing against the GM, but they're playing against a player of your level. And there's some GMs actually commentating your game. So maybe that's that's the future. I mean, I don't know. I mean, I've never done this before, but definitely. Definitely, I, uh, I I will. Yeah, Chekhov. Yeah, maybe that's what you are. also might be interested interested because I, I just realized that maybe not everyone wants to play a grandmaster, right? I mean, I totally understand this. I just thought for the beginning it might be. <laughs> yeah, I'll, I'll train you very hard. Yeah, if you're gonna come to every my stream, you should be hmm, like playing already three levels higher than you were. <laughs> right, right. Okay, okay. So uh, what I would like to do now, let me check if there's somebody you would like to raid. Is there somebody? Let me check if there is somebody. Somebody, somebody, somebody. I, uh, yeah, I'll do this. I'll try to do the sub battles, but I have to do the sub uh Simul first because I promised I sort of organized I, I started to organize this So I would like to do the sub simul first and then of course I'll organize the sub games So maybe people are more interested in sub games. I mean, I don't know I'd like to hear your thoughts actually on this uh, <laughs> On this snare. Oh Oh, okay. 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 I'll, I'll keep this in mind. Yeah, definitely. Oh, uh, look at this. There's Yevgeny there. What is he doing? Let's check. So that's Yevgeny Mirosnichenko there. Which Persian, language is it? it? I'm not hearing. Yevgeny, talk, talk. Please talk. Because I don't want... I think it's Russian stream. Sudan. Uh, yeah, it's Russian stream. Стоп, тут вроде можно же взять. Okay, okay. Да? I'm not gonna divert you to a Russian stream. Don't worry about this because Yevgeny does streams in both English and Russian. Today he does it in uh, Russian. Uh, thank you. I'm also doing coaching as well. Yeah, some limited coaching because I have so little time, so little time, so busy. Let's check what Anna Maya is doing. What is that? She's not blaming me. What is this? Okay, 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 let's let's turn this off. Really? No no no, let's turn this off. I mean what is <laughs> No, I cannot direct you here. I mean no 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 let's do something chess related. Or do you want to go here? I mean Chequitas. Yeah, you can see who I'm looking at the list. Gatakamski, is he here? Oh, he's here. Wow, yeah, Gatakamski, that would be something. Yeah, definitely. Let's read Gatakamski, the famous legend. Okay, okay, guys. Thank you that you are here. I uh, really uh, <laughs> appreciate it. Uh, yeah, everybody loves her. So let's read uh, Gata, the famous legend, without a second word. Let's keep it civil. And uh, please say hi to him. I don't know him personally, I've met it a couple of times, but never. Famous legend, fam just famous legend. Yes, so let's read the famous legend. Thank you guys and see you in the next streams. Have a great... What day it is today? Have a... What day it is? Friday. Yeah, have a great Friday. Have a great Friday. Bye-bye.